Lubing and filming your switches is probably the best thing you can do in terms of feel and sound. But what if you want more? If you're like me, you've probably looked into swapping your springs, but then you saw charts like this and immediately got confused. These charts are great for showing how springs respond to force, but honestly, it can be a little confusing interpreting these and figuring out which spring and weight is best for you. So the goal today is to walk through one of the most common aftermarket springs called Sprit Springs and understand how they work and why you would want to use them. For reference, I tested 63.5 gram Sprit Springs against springs that came in my EV01 linear switches in a Bakaneka 60. And for the most part, we'll only be looking at how the springs interact in a linear switch because I think that's the easiest way to explain how these work. Understanding how these springs affect tactility in a switch is more complicated and is gonna have to wait for part two. All right, let's get into it. What we have here is an MX spring sampler from R&D KBD with 63.5 gram springs of the following. Supreme, Slow Extremes 1, 2, and 3, Complex, Progressive, and Multi-Stage M1. Starting off with Supreme, these are straight up linear springs when it comes to feel and are basically the same as standard cherry springs. Nothing fancy here with the only difference being that these are 99.5% precise like all spread springs, and can vary by 0.3 grams. Whereas normal springs that come in your regular switch, those can vary by probably a couple of grams. I would only get these if you wanna explore a new spring weight or your current springs have spring ping or crunch that you can't get rid of. After lubing the default springs in my EV01 switches, I couldn't really tell the difference between the two. Next, we have the Slow Extreme 1, 2, and 3, with 1 being the lightest and 3 being the heaviest. This is where things get interesting. Like the name suggests, these springs feel slower because they're longer. This results in more force required at the top of the spring compared to a standard linear spring. This translates to something that almost feels like the bump in tactile switches, but not as dramatic. The Slow 2s are 3 grams heavier than the Slow 1s, and the slow threes are six grams heavier than the slow ones. These serve as a nice middle ground between linear and tactile switches, and I've heard that the increased weight at the top may complement tactile switches by emphasizing the bump. So these are nice if your springs are a little too light and you accidentally press some keys when you're resting your hand on your board. This actually happens to me sometimes when I'm gaming and I'm resting my fingers on the keys. Let's go new Kirkwood. Kirkwood. Yeah, let's do Kirkwood. Oh shit, wait, wait, uh, I dropped, I dropped. Uh, oh, what the heck? All right. So these can be a good alternative to getting heavier springs. So instead of upgrading to a 68 grand spring, maybe you can go one step below that, but just get a slow spring. In general, I would recommend trying either the slow two or three. Uh, because the slow one is the least noticeable in terms of feel. Something to consider is that the slow threes, in my opinion, overall make the switch feel heavier. So to offset this, I would recommend maybe going down a spring weight from your current weight. For example, if you're using a 63.5 gram spring like I am, then maybe you would want to go down a step to maybe like a 62 gram spring if you're gonna go with the slow threes. Now onto complex springs. These start out lighter at the top and then turn into a linear spring in the middle. Overall, these make switches feel lighter because they require less force at the top. If you think your springs are a little too light already and you experience some accidental key presses, I would definitely move up a weight. So in my case, since I'm using 63.5 gram springs, I would move up to the 65 gram springs if I were to try these complex ones. Sticking with the same weight makes the switch overall feel lighter. These are also a good option if you have a switch you prefer, like a Gateron Black Ink, for example, that comes with a 70 gram spring, but you think it's a little too heavy. Those are too heavy for me personally, so I would replace those with a complex spring maybe, instead of going down in weight. And just a note, there's no right way to put your complex and progressive springs in your switch when it comes to orientation. 
Moving on to progressive springs. These are a more dramatic version of complex springs. The coils start really close together on one side and then progressively get further apart on the other end. This results in the switch feeling very light at the top and then getting exponentially heavier as you bottom out. This kind of sounds similar to complex springs, but the change in weight in the middle is a lot more dramatic and noticeable in these progressives. For the 63.5 gram progressives, these start at 25 grams and actuate at 55 grams. So these are great if you're trying to bottom out less. Generally, bottoming out results in slower typing and more stress and fatigue in your hands, but honestly, it's all preference. I actually don't mind bottoming out and prefer the feel. However, I can see it being a little fatiguing if I were to try to bottom out with these progressives just because of how heavy they are. So I would stick to my current spring weight of 63.5 grams and definitely wouldn't go any higher. Last but not least, we have multi-stage springs. These are basically two springs put together and it starts off as a lighter spring at the top and then a heavier spring at the bottom. I have the M1 here, but they're also available in M0 and M2 with M0 being the lightest. Something important to note here is that the 63.5 gram M1 spring starts at around half the weight at 37 grams, whereas the M2 starts at three grams heavier than that, so at 40 grams. So I would say these feel kind of similar to the slow extremes with the difference being that the multi-stage springs have a dramatic bump in the middle, whereas the slows have a dramatic bump at the top. So in that sense, they both kind of imitate the feeling of a tactile switch, but the multi-stage feel less so compared to the slows. So why would you get these? This is kind of a cop-out answer, but I would say get these if maybe you've tried some of the other sprit springs that we talked about and you wanna experiment some more. There's no specific use case I can think of where a multi-stage spring would help, to be honest. So if you're looking for a recommendation, I would say try the slows, try the complex, try the progressives. If you don't like any of those, then give multi-stage springs a try. So there you have it. That was a rundown of all the sprit springs. Personally, my favorites are the slow extreme twos. The slow ones aren't noticeable enough for me and the slow threes are a bit too much. The Supremes are standard linear springs, so not much difference there. I could see myself trying a heavier complex spring though, since that makes the switch feel a little bit lighter overall. Progressives feel a little too heavy for me, but could be good for those who are trying to bottom out less. But I could see myself using progressives if I were to move down in weight from the 63.5 gram springs. And like I said, with the multi-stage springs, they could be good if you wanna do some more experimentation and the other ones don't fit what you like. But hopefully that explained the differences between the springs a little bit. I know springs can be a bit confusing. And with everything in this hobby, take my recommendations with a grain of salt because my preferences are going to be different from yours. All right, that's it from your boy Tin. Peace and catch you on the next one.